a warm greetings to one and all. In this session, let's learn about linear discriminant functions. The main purpose of linear discriminant function is to find a linear combination of features to separate two or more classes. It maximizes the ratio of between class variance to within class variance. It works by combining the features in a linear way and maximizes separation between groups and minimizes variation within each group. It is important in machine learning because it produces data complexity, improves classification accuracy, selects the most important features based on the applications, and enhances the model interpretability. Now let's learn about two class classification in linear discriminant functions. They are used in classification to separate two classes based on predictor variables. A typical linear discriminant function looks like y of x is equal to w transpose dx plus w naught, where x is the feature vector, w is weight vector, and w naught is bias or threshold. It is interpreted as if y of x is greater than 0, then it is assigned to class 1. If y of x is less than 0, then it is assigned to class 2. The decision boundary is where the discriminant function equals 0, that is, y of x is equivalent to 0. This is a linear equation in feature space. A boundary is just a point in one dimension as shown in this figure. Similarly, a boundary is just a line in two dimension as shown in this figure. Similarly, a boundary is a plane in three dimension as shown in this figure and a hyperplane in higher dimensions. The boundary divides a feature space into regions that assign to different classes as shown in this figures. Now let's look more closely at the decision boundary itself based on this diagram. Here the red color line is the decision boundary given by the function y of x. It separates the input space into two regions. The first region is r1 where y of x is greater than 0 and the second region is r2 where y of x is less than 0. So, the line itself is where the class R is undecided. Next, the first key property is orientation which is based on weight vector W. Here, the green color arrow which is perpendicular to the boundary, it controls the orientation of decision boundary. The next key property is location which is based on the term W0. It shifts the red color boundary line by either left or right. And the position is given by minus W0 divided by the magnitude of weight vector W. The blue color arrow represents the data point X. The perpendicular projection of point X onto the red line gives the distance Y of X divided by the magnitude of weight vector W. So, hope you are clear on decision boundary with this example diagram. Now let's learn about multi-class classification in linear discriminant functions. The first approach is one versus rest, that is the classifier separates one class from all other classes as shown in this diagram. Let's have an example with three classes, namely cat, dog and rabbit. The first classifier represents cat versus not cat. The second classifier represents dog versus not dog. The third classifier represents rabbit versus not rabbit. So the decision is choose based on the classifier with the highest confident value. The next approach is one versus one. Here each classifier separates a pair of classes as shown in this diagram. Let's have an example with three classes namely cat, dog and rabbit. Here the first classifier represents cat versus dog. The second classifier represents cat versus rabbit and the third classifier represents dog versus rabbit. The decision is based on majority voting among the classifiers. Multi-class classification maximizes the ratio of between class variance to within class variance. It involves constructing k into k minus 1 divided by 2 binary discriminant functions. When using multiple binary classifiers for multi-class problems, the region can rise where the classifiers disagree or cannot clearly determine the classes. 
These ambiguous regions are represented by green color area in the figure given here. Single K class discriminant model is an alternate approach for ambiguity. Here, multiple binary classification may give conflicting decision in multi class problems. To avoid this, we use single K class discriminant model. This model uses K linear functions that is Y k of x is equal to w k transpose of x plus w k naught. A point x belongs to the class c k if y k of x greater than y i of x for all i not equal to k. Boundary between the classes c k and c j is defined as w k minus w j transpose x plus w k naught minus w j naught is equal to 0. The decision region that is the decision regions are always convex and singly connected. This is because any point X that lies on the line connecting two points XA and XB within same region RK also belongs to RK. It is expressed as X is equivalent to lambda XA plus 1 minus lambda XB where 0 less than or equivalent to lambda less than or equivalent to 1. Finally, let's learn about least squares for classification in linear discriminant functions. Normally, least squares is used for regression, but it can also be applied for classification. The idea is to find a line of boundary that separate classes by minimizing the squared error between the predicted outputs and the actual class labels. As a result, we obtain linear discriminant function. Now, let's notice how least square line shifts badly when there is an outlier while logistic regression handle it better yes least square can classify but logistic regression is more robust especially with outliers so hope you are clear with linear discriminant function in this session thank you all